and welcome everyone to Russell Takes Mania on 411mania.com, part of the new podcast network. Everybody, subscribe if you are watching this. Go to the YouTube channel. You subscribe to everything 411. Make sure you follow us on a regular basis. Because I am, yes. yes, I am Joe yes. Martel. Eric, thank you with your CCM Whalers toque joining us today, or winter hat. Yes, bought bought my by my uh, my great friend. Uh, this Tyler Godin years ago. This is my first ever hat of my collection, as a matter of fact. All right, on. It's the only one without the palm on the top. <laughs> There's no palm. I think I they need look to get better. The palm one eventually, you know. They look better without the palm. Palm, in my opinion. Wow! Wow! What a betrayal early in the show already. Look at that. <laughs> I actually wow. have a uh, toque somewhere where I cut the pom-pom off. That's ah, back there. I'm not going to get it right now. Uh, how was your Tuesday working for you oh, so far? Oh, man. You Beautiful. It's like 70 degrees here in Rhode Island. You know, right. like, you know, global warming is going to kill us all, but it's good right now. So <laughs> that, that that's promising at least. So I got a nice walk in and now I'm, ready to talk about wrestling so that's always good for me yeah let's stick to the wrestling we're not political takes mania so no 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 stay away from that especially what's going on in the world these days wrestling will be the top of the priority list and quite a bit going on we uh you might have saw us review uh full gear uh with a in my opinion it was the it was even better than the show our review (laughs) i thought it I thought I gave it five stars upon rewatching it. You rewatch our shows? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny. Fair enough. <laughs> no comment, good sir. Uh, yes. So, what we're looking at right now is uh, recapping some Raw, which uh, after full gear, like for those who didn't catch that review, you gave it like, about an 8.5, a 9 out of 10. Yeah, I'm not, I would say 9, 9.5 out of 10. Yes. And you gave it a, a, a very solid uh, 6 out of 10. Yeah, but again, before anyone starts yelling at me, I have different tastes than most of the online fans. I don't uh, dislike AEW. It just doesn't suit my liking for the most part. Most of it's right. fine. It's just not my thing. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Anybody says anything to you, I've, I've got a few baseball bats. <laughs> I'll chase people around. Uh, I'll I didn't okay. mean that. I didn't mean that, people. I apologize. Already in trouble. Oh, God. <laughs> no, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, what we're yeah. going to be concentrating on, though, after full gear was uh, got you to say a nine. I say a six. So we'll average it out at a 7.5. We went to a four out of 10 Bret Hart rated Monday Night Raw. Um, I saw actually on uh, 401 Mania, they gave it a six and a half. And generally, I'll be honest, when I finished watching Raw, I always expect, all right, here's whatever my rating is. 401 is going to have at least one lower than what I would give it. Because I tend to rate it higher than most. Hmm. I gave it a 4 out of 10. I turned it on. They gave it the 6.5. And it blew my mind to see how they rated it high. Uh, Not that 6.5 is high, but higher than I expected. Um, Hmm. Have you heard anything from the Twitterverse uh, positive about Raw whatsoever? No. Second straight week now. Last week, as you recall, I came on here. I was like, nobody was talking about Raw at all. Once again, last night, no one was talking about Raw at all. The only things I knew of before I listened to some reviews this morning uh, was that Ali wrestled Ricochet. Correct. It was apparently very good, Mm -hmm. and Ricochet lost again, and nothing important came out of it, so I thus didn't really care all that much. That was probably, I don't know if I'd say the highlight, but one of the few highlights. There's not many, but we'll. I'll get into some of it. Uh, I like that match. It caught me by surprise because I am not much of a Ricochet fan, but it reminded me of what I really enjoyed about Ali, and I haven't really seen him in a singles match as a heel So this was my first experience enjoying that, and he really works as a heel well, which shouldn't really surprise anyone, but he was such a natural baby face that you wouldn't think, you you wouldn't even consider how good is he as a heel, plus the obvious connotation is when you're thinking of someone named Mustafa Ali turning heel in WWE, you just know there's going to be trouble. Uh, Mm -hmm. But so far, uh, there is trouble, but it's not related to the obvious reasons. Yeah. This match really highlighted that this guy can do it all. He is really good in the ring as a heel. He can still work his high-flying 205 live style that got him impressed by Mm -hmm. WWE officials while still being a heel. You wanted him to lose. 
put on a great match. Ricochet looked pretty good in the loss. He passed out from the uh, uh, Koji Clutch, I think is what they're officially calling it. And I'm sure they'll rename it something awful like Teabag or something. Because uh, <laughs> it's kind of, if you think about the positioning, Teabag wouldn't actually be that far off. Anyway. No. Um, so he lost to passing out to the submission move. It really highlighted Mustafa Ali and I got to pronounce it properly. It's Mustafa. They're really yes. highlighting it's pronounced Mustafa. And I'm going to have to correct myself on that one. Uh, he was again, one of the true highlights. So you did hear some good things about in that match. You were saying, uh, yes, that was pretty much the only thing I heard about the show. And I mean, you know, I, the, the basic consensus was that, they actually allowed these guys to work the way they're best at mm -hmm. and such. I'm not surprised at all that Ali is a great worker as a heel. I mean, like you, when you were saying that there, I kept just harking back to how people were like, man, I wonder if Pac will be able to work as a heel. He's such a natural baby face and he, he's an exceptional heel, which right. just goes to show you, if you're a great worker, you can work any style 100%. whatsoever. Yeah. So I'm not surprised at all at that. Uh, just once again, though, I mean, yeah, in a vacuum, it's great. And then I sit back and think, well, what will happen to them next week? And it's like nothing. Ali benefits zero from beating Ricochet, who has been, you know, has no momentum. And Ricochet's just going to go back to doing what he was doing already, which was what he did last night. Yeah. Losing. Lose or be on main event which mm. is such an odd show considering what it's turned into now. Uh, <laughs> wrong title. It shouldn't be called Job Squad, but that would be more appropriate. Uh, yeah, Sunday when... Night Heat! <laughs> Bring it back! Uh, when You mentioned it, I think it was last week, or it might have been off camera when we discussed it, but you mentioned to me that if you're feuding with Ricochet, something's going wrong with your career. And you think of how Retribution showed up, and he was they were attacking the entire show, whether it was SmackDown mm. or Raw. They were taking chainsaws to the rope and really making a nuisance of themselves. And then when they finally attacked people, it was everyone up to the top of the card, such as Drew McIntyre and mm -hmm. Fiend. And I think uh, Randy Orton got attacked at one point as well yep. to losing most of their matches, if not all of them to the hurt business and now feuding with Ricochet. So I am okay with, starting at the top, not making the big impression and dropping down a level. I think uh, the reference I always go to, and it's not a very common one, but Tensai. When Lord Tensai came out, he got that monster push. Not that it was a good one, but he got a monster push, lost, and then was dropped down to pretty much the bottom of the card. We don't see that all that often, but here we are seeing it with everyone involved in retribution except it seems like ali who has at least been moved up uh, uh you know on the ladder of the roster well well in fairness the the only way for him to go was up that's <laughs> was going to be my next point it couldn't get yeah. any worse for him unless he was released altogether uh so he oh he, you kidding me he he'd be in aew tomorrow if they released him but, oh my god here entirely correct when it yeah. comes to uh, ali though he's really made the most of it as uh, this heel and he's the only shining light of retribution at this point i'm not going to say retribution is doing anything good but he made me care just a little bit more than usual because of how he was last night and with the win because they desperately needed a win yeah well there was only the only way to go was up there too in regards to carrying the I mean, that poor guy, I mean, he's doing everything he can, but it mm -hmm. was a law. It, it was a lost cause before he even got there. At least, you know, at least it is getting him on TV. I yeah. mean, if you want to give a positive, at least he's on TV. There's plenty of people who aren't. I mean, Apollo Crews a few months ago was getting pushed. Now he's coming over tonight to watch the AEW games announcement. <laughs> so he's, he's nowhere to be found other than there, man. Yeah, they're not missing him at catering at all either. It, it, no. It's too bad. Um, I, I don't... I understand that someone like Apollo is not going to be the top guy. I see his faults, but to go from where he was to disappearing, a lot like Mojo, as you'll reference more than once. Oh, Mojo! <sighs> It's just strange to watch what they'll do, uh, to, to watch exactly how they'll handle so many of the guys that we get excited for on some level. I'm not saying Apollo Crews is going to be the next universal champion, the, you know, the name of the company, the face of the brand. 
but to go from Universal Champion, not sorry, uh, United States Champion, if I were to get my yeah. titles correct. There's so many in WWE. I apologize for making. Yeah, that that's mistake. part of the problem there yeah. too. There's too many. So he goes from United States Champion to nowhere, and that's happened a lot. Unfortunately, when I when I was thinking back to what I saw on Raw, so much of it just falls flat. It's not terrible. There's not much that's actually awful, but it all feels awful because they have such an amazing roster, so much potential, and then they just flatline with everything they do. So that was my impression of Raw last night, especially after watching Full Gear. Um, I didn't expect WWE to be whipped into shape by Full Gear and AEW. No. You know, they've been around for over a year now and Raw hasn't changed anything really. But no. uh, at the same time, I didn't expect it to be the complete opposite for where I might not love AEW, but I could never deny it's exciting. And yeah. WWE is just not yeah. exciting on any level when I'm watching Raw anyways. Right. All right. Well, I remember last year when AEW did the first double of n- double or nothing. Right. And then everyone was like, how's the next Raw going to be? And that was the one where Sammy did the thing in the electric chair or something where he name dropped AEW in that awful segment. And there was like three minutes of wrestling in the first hour. And it was Lance Anoyai versus Shane McMahon. I think oh. that was the man. And, and right then you knew, all right, nothing's going to really change there. No. Double or not that double or nothing still the best AEW show they ever did. And WWE didn't even respond. So they just, you know, they get bored with these guys. Like yeah. that was what I was thinking as you were just talking right there, especially with Apollo Crews. They give them a little bit for a little while and then they just grow bored and then they get phased down and they're gone again. And then the next guy comes in and it's rinse and repeat. Yep. And yeah. such. And it's, to it's, that to that point, let me ask you. Sure. What's happened with Chad Gable as a heel on SmackDown ever since they did that turn? Uh, I haven't seen anything of him. I think that was two weeks ago. So I think officially he was off one show since he became Chad Gable again. But my timing might be off. It might be two weeks. Uh, <laughs> oh man! It, it's no surprise there. I think going to SmackDown for a lot of the people that were drafted over there ended up being. Even though it's a better show, it ended up being a, a reduced position on the card. Yeah. Now they're not making. Because there's key. not enough time. Exactly. Uh, not I enough time. Alistair Black as the big one. That's one person that I feel like WWE's handled. I don't want to say well, but they've protected him. They've really been slow. They're not letting him job out to anyone. The worst that you could say is that he's not on TV enough to really get momentum, but at least he's yeah. losing and reducing himself like a Mojo or Apollo Cruz. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he was drafted to. Um, to SmackDown, and I don't think he's appeared on it once since that. Yeah, I haven't heard a thing about him now that you bring it up. Yeah. Yeah. And that that was someone, he might not have been on Raw every week, but he was in the pretty major program with Kevin Owens and just had the heel turn and then went to a disappearing act. So uh, the problem with SmackDown is SmackDown, so it's only two hours, so it's less than Raw, so you're going to have trouble getting people on anyway. Correct. The while obviously SmackDown has the big winners as far as storylines go, or they did, now they're pretty much down to one because mm-hmm. from what I understand, Bailey and Sasha has wrapped up so they can go to Sasha and Carmella, which, whoa, <laughs> I don't know about that one. I'm okay um, with that, but I it makes me wonder what they're going to do with Bailey. That's more my Yeah, opinion. yeah, but, like, but the, uh, that feud's not going to be as hot as the no. one we just had. No. So you're pretty much left with Ro- the Roman thing now. And and prior that that's besides the point. Prior to that, they had these three angles. Mm. Those two, the Ray Seth one, which you and I personally think is brutal, but they're doing it. So yeah. when you have three angles consistently like that, and the show's only two hours, it's gonna be tough. People are gonna get left off. So that's the the unfortunate side effect of even having good stuff. Mm-hmm. Eventually, you have to cut people out. To make more time for that and i think alistair is a uh, a victim, victim of that and my gut feeling is bruce pritchard mm. probably is not high on him wow i hope you're yeah. wrong because he's one of those talents that i feel has potential i don't know if he's going to be the next john cena or anything like that but he's very unique uh his international oh, yeah, there's no doubt about that yeah very unique international star literally mm. if they make a star out of him he's international 
his English is strong enough that you could put him in front of a microphone and his promos aren't perfect, but he can talk. It's a lot better than what they could do with Andrade, for example. So yeah. there's so much potential there. And I really feel like there's something that they could be doing. And personally, I always feel it's better for him to be off TV than on TV and without direction. I think that is more damaging. Yeah. Yeah. He- if you compare him to his former tag partner, Ricochet, you would be right on the money on that one, dude. Exactly. So uh, I think in reality, this isn't terrible, but it questions what priorities are for WWE. Because you're absolutely right. I was actually making some notes about SmackDown. So not sure what's happening with Bailey and Sasha and Carmella. I am not excited for that angle, but I'm sort of excited for something different because Bailey and Sasha, I don't know where else it could go. That said, I didn't feel like they really capped it off well because it was just a single quick match on SmackDown. Wasn't Could've a pay per view on another pay per view. Yeah, yeah. I would I would have thought maybe like especially if the next standard pay per view, not this brand versus brand best of the best garbage, they have TLC coming up. That could be a pretty good main event of the show. Finish it off with mm. a TLC match between those two. That's a match that we haven't seen them do from any of their feuds, whether it was in NXT yeah. or on the main roster. So there was potential there. And so instead, Sasha is facing the women's champion at yeah. Survivor Series, right? Asuka, right. What is Asuka doing right now on Raw? She showed up on Raw and she uh, took on, uh, I don't even remember. Let me take a look. It was <laughs> very forgettable. Um, I don't even, I didn't even write it down, but she did show up. She had a match. I think it was, for some reason, I feel like it was against Nia Jax, um, but I don't know if that was the case or not. Yesterday? You know, yeah, I'm the wrong person to ask there. All I know about Nia Jax is that uh, Lana went through the table. Yet, yeah, I think it's the again. eighth time now. Yes. Speaking of things that have gotten old, <laughs> what the hell is the point of this at this, this I, point? They are definitely turning Lana face in a sympathetic way. I'm not saying it's effective. I'm not going to dispute that. But they yeah. had her trying to get sympathy from Mandy, Rose, and uh, Dana Brooke after she was saved by them and they said we want nothing to do with you we just want to make a point to naya and Shayna." so she's very much the forgotten piece of this puzzle and uh it really what we i don't want to say predicted but we considered as an option is still quite open charlotte might show up next week and take over team raw we'll see where it goes yeah we'll see so yeah wow there's only a couple uh one more show for both uh for raw it's two two for smackdown Yeah. yeah Till that, till that pay-per-view. Wow, that life comes at you fast. <laughs> it comes at you fast. Oh, I wow. thought you were going to finish your Ferris Bueller uh, quote there. Hell no, hell no. <laughs> if you don't stop and look around a while, you could miss Mojo. <laughs> so, shut up with the Mojo. Uh, no. I was thinking about Survivor Series, and uh, <laughs> we've been saying how it just feels empty. The, there's no real brand impact. Oh, I know where you're line. going here. I know where you're going here. With Probably this, not. I was... I was going to oh. ask you what you think would be the right way to book the best versus the best option. Would it have been the winning brand gets the 30 uh, spot in the Royal Rumble? Or I read someone else, uh, someone else suggested they position the draft after Survivor Series and therefore the winning brand gets the top choice. I think the 30 is the better option, but can you see of any way it's worth doing this brand versus brand garbage without any real stakes involved so far? First. First off, you're right. I was way off on that one right there. I'll let you ask whatever you think I was going to say, and I'll respond. I thought you were good. I thought we were going to getting ready to talk about that bickering segment um from last night. Oh, but we'll get we'll get to that. No, Um, I'd rather not. (laughs) Well, well, maybe I have something to say about it. Did you ever think of that? Anyway, the thirty option is the best one. The draft is meaningless to me, and I think it's meaningless to most people now until it happens again next year and people fool themselves into thinking it's a big deal again. But the 30 thing means something. Mm -hmm. That has meant something for forever. The Rumble is one of the few things they do well when it doesn't involve Daniel Bryan not (laughs) winning it for two consecutive years. So yeah, the 30 spot is the right way to go. You get, make it like the Major League Baseball All-Star game where the winning team gets the home field advantage thing or in this case the 30th spot and the losing team gets the first spot that's a good one i like that yeah. one 
I would yeah. almost say make them have 29 and 30 and then number one and number two for the losing team to really, but I actually, actually, no, I, ha- I have, I have it perfect. Now Go the ahead. losing team, the first 15 people are from the losing team. The winning team has the last 15 people. That That's way you good. can at least keep keep some intrigue as to who number 30 would be, which is the one fault, I think, when they announce who's going to get number 30 is that, well, that kind of kills the momentum yeah, they, for whoever it is. You do need to leave room for surprises. So, okay. Um, all right. Let's say there's five surprises. So the winning team gets the 13, the losing team gets 12, and the the losing team is the first 12, and then the winning team is the – other 13 you do it that way Eh, i think it's stick stick to number one and number 30 and we just keep it simple and leave the whole thing open but i think that's a much better approach uh or or use survivor series like they were in the past and don't make it brand versus brand uh oh my goodness yeah I'm, I'm not saying I love the idea of Mysterio and Rollins, but there's an angle there. You could build a match where they each choose three or four partners and they feud against each other. You can involve the entire family if you need to. There's so much more potential using the stories involved on the single brand and have them feud against each other than inventing silly feuds. Watching Bobby Lashley, Lashley promo against Sami Zayn, who's not going to show up until the Friday night, it's meaningless, and I don't care which title means more to anyone. Uh, it's just the dumbest thing possible. Yeah, and the Survivor Series always works best when those big matches have stakes. Correct. Obviously, look, I think you and I both agree here. The invasion angle was an abomination. But that match at the end did at least have stakes in it and was a pretty good match, even if everything else about it was completely and horribly wrong. Correct. The, the one, Team Austin versus Team Bischoff, where Michaels has the great run at the end. Mm-hmm. Huge stakes. Great match. The one where Ziggler beat Rollins a few years ago with the help of Sting, mm-hmm. uh, Team Cena versus Team Authority. Huge stakes there. That match was great. Yep. Uh, hell, even... This wasn't a Survivor Series match. It was at SummerSlam. I always really liked, other than the finish, because it was terrible, the Nexus Team Raw match. Yep. Stakes. Big stakes. Intrigue. Will somebody turn? Will somebody get replaced? Who's going to show up? That's what where these matches work the most. It's the same thing as Bash at the Beach 1996. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. the, best, the best multi-man you know, six man match or the most important, at least of all time. I think that's you a better know? way to say it. Yeah, that pro- probably is. As a match, it's good, but you know, yeah, it's only so much with those people in it. Um, that's the right way to go with that. Agreed. You know, and they just, yeah, it it pretty much this is pretty much turned into the WWE All Star Game Survivor Series. That's a good you know? way to put it. Yeah, you you put these super teams together. And yeah, maybe the matches are good, but you forget about them a week later because they mean nothing. The only ones that have stood out, because like the brand versus brand thing hasn't done anything, but it was those big title matches where it was Brock Lesnar against Daniel Bryan or yeah. Brock Lesnar against AJ Styles. And while I'm enjoying both Randy Orton to a point and uh, Roman Reigns, that is not a big drawing match, especially when they're heel versus heel. Uh, right. There was no exciting aspect to it whatsoever. So I think. Well, well, what? now, so next week for Raw, we should talk about this. Yep. They're doing Drew and Randy again. That's right. So, so that's the one smart. I, I don't want to say it's good, but the positive silver lining of it all is that the shows are a little bit more intriguing. They're not exciting, but Drew against Rorton to see who is going to take Roman is definitely more exciting than whoever wins against Roman, uh, sorry, Roman in the end, because in the end, there's no stake between whoever wins. If it's McIntyre against Roman, it's going to be a good match. And it's one of those matches people are going to actually look forward to. But at the same time, you feel like WWE should hold off on that because that is an actual WrestleMania main event if they book it. Uh, They have, if you may recall, they did do that match at WrestleMania, if I'm not mistaken. And that match was... uh, Fell flat. there's, There's a reason nobody remembers it. Correct. Uh, until we just brought it up there. So that that is the problem there too. They pretty much have done all these matches already and they weren't exactly 
all that impressive, really. Right. So I, but honestly, if, if I were them, I would put the title back on Drew, not for that match, but because, you know, Drew is the better the option as the champion than Orton. Absolutely. Yeah, as long as he's not wrestling Bray, as long as they're not doing that. What is Bray doing now? He wasn't on Raw whatsoever. The, we saw some Alexa Bliss who uh, didn't really reference much about The Fiend. She had a segment where uh, Nikki made her choose, are you going to be friends with The Fiend or friends with me? And Alexa chose The Fiend. And that was it. It was a single backstage wow. minute. Um, it might be building to something. I think the more important aspect is what's happening between Nikki and Alexa. Yeah. But, but at the same time, I don't know if I really want to see a matchup between them. And that adds up to something else we've been meaning to talk about for a while. Does that mean they're splitting up another tag team, Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss, after I don't know how long they've been together? I, uh, I, th- I think you, you've answered your own question already there, man. Well, let, let, let's get into that. i got to say it. So yeah. let's take a look okay. at who they've split up over the last year. And I'm just talking about 2020. I'm not talking about any like calendar year a year. Just 2020, they split up Lana and Natalia. They were a duo on Raw for maybe they a were. month or two. And then they were split up. Wow. The big one uh, related to uh, the the releases back in April was AJ Styles and the Good Brothers. That, that mm-hmm. ended up being split up. Uh, we had a team on Raw of Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne. They just disappeared. Thorne's obviously Slapjack now, and then Brendan Vink's been renamed in NXT, but he hasn't shown up anywhere. Oh, uh, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander were teaming up for most of the summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sasha and Bailey is the big one. The Iconics got split up, so Peyton can join up with Lacey Evans. No. The Evans, get it right. Don't yeah. be like me. Yeah. Uh, the New Day got split up in the draft, though that's maybe not as big a deal because they're still a duo of well, like Xavier and Kofi are yeah, still together, but they split up from big E uh, Andrade Andrade and Angel Garza were a unit for a while during the year. And all of a sudden they're split up for no reason. Andrade hasn't been on TV since where's Garza. He's been promoing about being a Latin Lothario type thing where he's talking to the camera saying this rose is going to be special for you and I'll do everything for you. Uh, it's uh, very, it's very 80s feeling. It's not bad, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of meat to the to that type of bone. There's more well, to it. well, I mean, this is probably an unpopular opinion. I would say there's never really been all that much meat to Garza Jr. there. So I yeah, can I, see remember, why I've, I've seen him. He was in triple A for a long time. He was in the crash for a long time, and he's a good heel, but he was always behind a lot of the other guys there. Always. I could see the advantage of him in WWE because he's a better promo than Andrade. <laughs> but other than that, Andrade's better than him in the ring. He's got better charisma, uh, in-ring charisma. On the mic, he's limited, but he's got better in-ring charisma. He's more intense. He's got a better look. He, he's bigger. He's bulkier. He can actually be credible against a heavyweight, whereas Garza, I don't see that working out very well. Um, but it's all because he can talk. And he's there- not great. He's just got better English than Almas. There there has never been a statement you have made that I have agreed with more than the one you just made right there. And every asset, Sombra, Andrade, whatever you want to call him, is way better than that guy. And yet they chose that guy because of the promo stuff. Which I get. I just Hmm. don't think it's that important. I don't think his promos are strong enough to make him actually pushing on top of that, too, I do know that Pritchard loved his uncle, Hector Garza, okay. who obviously we remember he was in WWF briefly in the 90s before yeah. they just let him go and he went to WCW and was way better there, even though they didn't push him either. No, but he did have some big highlight moments, whereas in WWE or WWF at the time. Hall. He actually beat yeah. Scott Hall in On WCW. That's yeah. Right. Luke, um, but he still beat him. That's right. Yeah. Uh, continuing on with the br- teams that they've broken up. I don't know if they really broke up or they just got separated, but Drew Gulak and Daniel Bryan were a big thing before the pandemic. And all of a sudden oh, that's man, been yeah. reduced to nothing. Well, one we're both going to be very sad about. They split up the Lucha house party. I know. I know. Oh I man. Hi. I have not been able to go on since that fateful day and such. So Kalisto is still on SmackDown alone. 
Grand Metallic and Lindsay Dorado are still L Lucha House Party oh, on yeah. Raw. Yeah, th there was another clip I saw last night, and Didn't I, happen. I nearly, if I was capable of crying, if I was capable of crying, I would have. It was <laughs> awful. I, I generally like the 24-7 R-Truth related stuff. Not as in, oh, wait, I can't wait they, to do for them to do more, but it's it's fine for a quick minute or two. In this case, they just made everyone look like a complete tool. And oh there was no benefit to anyone. It wasn't funny. It wasn't entertaining. I, I really have no idea what they were thinking with that. I, they broke up Tucker and Otis so Tucker could do that. Yeah. They got, you brought up the ghoul acting. That guy resigned because of what he was doing with Daniel Bryan. And then they split him up and now he's doing, he's doing this. I mean, he's got to be just going, oh Kicking my himself. God, what? What the hell was I thinking? The only positive. Th there was one thing that they did with Gulak that I'm not saying is going to lead to anything, but shows the potential is that yeah. he tried to join the Hurt Business on Raw and they turned him down. Uh, uh, but they also did that with uh, Titus O'Neil a couple weeks ago and then he came and challenged Bobby Lashley, all angry about being rejected and beaten up, and then he got squashed in about a minute. So if that's maybe Drew, but, maybe Drew will get squashed in a minute in the exactly. next few weeks. Uh, continuing on with teams that they broke up and sticking with uh, the lucha style, they had Umberto Carrillo teaming up with Rey Mysterio at one point. That went nowhere. Where is Umberto? Uh, probably main event. I don't think he was drafted to SmackDown. He's still on Raw, and if he's not fitting into three hours, then he's on main event or catering. That, he's the type of guy, they because they clearly, unlike the rest of the Luchador guys, they don't even really see anything in him. No. So he's probably the type of guy that they'll be putting on the chop block or something. He would be great. You know, he would be great in that Phantasma stable. Agreed. I, I was they thinking... Obviously, NXT can't take every, I don't want to say reject, but the people that do get rejected by Vince and Bruce, NXT would be a great home for them, but there's only so much TV for them. Uh, I know you joked about on uh, Isaiah Scott not getting a lot of TV time. It's actually been pretty fair where it's once every week or once every two weeks, but it's still not that much. Right. And it's just better than what they would get on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. And that And that's ironic because Raw has three hours. You'd think they'd be able to fit a whole lot of people in there, and yet it's the two-hour shows that make the best use. And even they are struggling. They with definitely that struggle. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think with Raw, um, I don't want to get too detailed into what I where I would fix everything because we only have so much time to cover. But I feel like they spend a lot of time uh, using the same people over and over again and without yes. any real purpose. Like, <laughs> I know we... I want to skip over the bickering thing, but let's bring that up now as an example. Yes. They put all these four guys, five guys, sorry, in the ring to bicker for five minutes, let's say. It's stupid, pointless, and all it leads to is a tag match for the sake of having a match that is fine. It's not a bad match, yeah. but it accomplishes nothing. I don't. It, not every match has to have a stake, uh, a stake involved, but at least right. have it leading to something, a part of a story. It didn't advance anything. It just said, oh, these guys don't get along as they're building up into Survivor Series. We didn't need this match or this bickering segment to tell that. We already knew these guys didn't get along. Yeah. So it accomplished nothing. It was 20 or 25 minutes of wasted TV time, and it just made me care even less about Survivor Series because it was badly done. And it also makes no sense because, again, I, I'm looking at these, these five guys and Keith Lee is the only one of them who was on Raw three weeks ago. Yep. The rest of them were all on SmackDown or elsewhere. And quite honestly, Keith Lee hasn't even been there that long. No, it's only he, been since what September? Uh, but just before that, it was after he won the uh, lost the NXT title to Karrion Cross. Yeah, so yeah, and and I think these that was guys. June or July. Not only do they expect me that these guys suddenly are so gung ho about defending the honor of a brand they haven't even been on that long, but now they're fighting over it too. They're fighting over it to beat the brand they were on for the longer time. Right. It, it's it. maybe, well, I, you know, I can't understand with AJ. He just wants to stick the, the needle into Paul Heyman one more time there. So that and that's not part of the story. So it still doesn't make any sense. Uh, hey, well, Hey, we're, we're coming up with our own head cannon. Here. Oh, great. We're, Lovely. We're going to explain it ourselves. I got to convince myself to, to yeah. 
It's the only way to stay sane with these people. Convince myself that this is why they're doing it. No, no, no. That's not my job. That is WWE's job, and they're doing a terrible job. I, I just turned into some of our old uh, buddies on the forum there for a minute. <laughs> it's like this, and it will it will keep me sane if I if I explain it this way in my head. No, it, it's just badly done. But yeah. we're still not done the list. Uh, even yes. though I think I've listed off 10 teams so far, we still are not. I probably have passed the halfway point, but keep going. You mentioned Tucker and Otis. Both of them are doing nothing. Otis lost to, um, I can't remember who, to, but he didn't qualify. Oh, it was Rollins. Oh, yeah, Rollins. Qualify for the Survivor Series team. And that's a guy who actually has been on SmackDown for the last year and would actually have some reason to defend SmackDown, whereas Rollins has been on Raw for five or six years. No allegiance to SmackDown whatsoever, but he's representing the blue team. That makes all the sense in the world. Wonderful uh, sense. Alexa and Nikki, um, our good friend Mojo, he was teaming up with Riddick Moss at the beginning of the year. That went to Raw Underground or nowhere. I don't know where they're Darn going. He's still got the mirror, though. Does he? Who cares? Yes. The mirror, the mirror is with you forever, man. I got to say, I actually am one of the few that has enjoyed Mojo. I think his intensity is something that doesn't get matched very often. I'm not saying he's great, but he's got a natural intensity that a lot of people do not bring to the table. But he's he's nothing. In, in all seriousness, Mojo has something. Yeah. But he's just been giving silly thing after silly thing. And then, and he's another one. He signed, I think he signed for like five years, and then they approximately did n zero. They just they did the mirror thing, and then they banished him to the catering table. I think the last time I saw him, he was getting that COVID test stuck up his nose. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. He hasn't <laughs> been on TV since he did that video. Yeah, uh, maybe he got in trouble for doing that. It, it's weird because of all the people that could be on, uh, I know it hasn't been around for about a month, but the Raw Underground, he'd actually be a good person to fit in that environment. No, I don't remember seeing him on Raw Underground. You, you'd also think he's g best friends with a celebrity that they actually brought in to work with him. Wouldn't you want to keep that celebrity happy by pushing his friend? Well, they couldn't keep the celebrity because he, he retired and then went back to the NFL, he, right? He, yeah, he had to go and lose 38-3 to three with Tom Brady on Sunday night. Oh, that's what – I'm no football guy whatsoever. Yeah, so. that, that's what happened. It's going good there too. So Mojo and Riddick Moss, um, not really a team, but in NXT, Mia Yim and – uh, Keith Lee were, I, they weren't even a couple. They just hung out a lot. They were good friends. All of a sudden that's thrown out the window. Um, Cesaro and Nakamura, they're still together, but they were a unit with Sami Zayn. That's out the window. Yeah. And then the big one right now on SmackDown, but it might be getting back together. We don't know, but Rollins and Murphy are, I don't know. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I think I, I counted 16 teams in less than a year. They have put together and split up 16 teams. Yeah. And, and they've been slower breaking them up recently for a while. It was every, every show week. they were breaking these guys up that, that Rollins Murphy thing. They're like a romantic comedy at this point. Will pay, won't pay. Maybe Seth is going to make a grand gesture on the next show or something. I want to touch one more thing when it involves WWE, and I'd like to move on from that. But uh, the okay. silver lining to that angle is at least that they've concentrated more away from Rollins and Mysterio for the 84th time. They're now <laughs> creating this intrigue with Murphy and Murphy against Mysterio. So I'm not saying oh, it's that good. is better. It is, is fresher, better. and that's a match I think I'd be entertained by, but yeah. we'll see where that goes. Oh, yeah, Ray, 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 will, Ray and him will do good work if they're going to go that route. So I want to bypass over NXT for now because even though it was a good show and I preferred it over Dynamite last week, all the focus is on AEW. And I know it's 5 o'clock Eastern time for us, but we're one hour away from a big announcement by AEW. Uh, oh, and yes. So while we... It's happening in the future for us. We have a good mm -hmm. idea. You were saying you have a good idea of what it's going to be. So in, I'm still have doubts because I don't believe all the sources that you believe in. But let's say well, you're, what is well, the this, news with AEW? Go ahead. This source is from AEW itself. So you can believe this one good okay. here. So they have an announcement currently on my clock. It's 5.06. So it's about an hour from now. They have an announcement coming on their AEW Games uh, YouTube account. It was leaked earlier today from their site. I don't know if they put it up early by mistake or mm. what, 
but there were a few graphics released on there and I got a chance to see them. And so there are three things that are gonna be announced tonight. One is this AEW Casino Double or Nothing. Sounds like maybe a mobile game or a gambling related game of some sort. Okay. Um, AEW Elite GM or GM Elite, which sounds, the rumor is it's gonna be like, you know, the TEW games. Oh yeah. It's going to be an AEW version of that, supposedly. Ah, that I would confirm. like. Yeah, that would be very interesting. I love TEW. Mm-hmm. And the big one is a console PC game like the WWE 2K series. Um, and the only thing we know for sure is that it is being developed by Ukes. Nice. Which, as most people will recall, is the developer that worked on the SmackDown series for a long, long time, right up until the last 2K game, which they then parted ways with 2K, and that led to that uh, game that, quite frankly, was not well-received at all. No. No. I honestly haven't played any... I I still play video games. I haven't played a wrestling video game in so long, but that's Uh, that's interesting. As someone who has, I I used to play those WWE games even after I stopped watching because, you know, it's just fun to do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like shut your mouth, smack down, shut your mouth. And here comes the pain from Mm -hmm. like the early two thousands. Those were, I thought really good. Obviously the no mercy game, WrestleMania 2000, the WCW N64 games are all beloved Mm -hmm. and such. I think just after a while, you know, and this has happened, this has happened with Madden. This has happened with a lot of sports games. They pretty much just fall into this formula where there's really no change year after year. And the WWE games suffered from that. And as such, it led to that reviled game last year. Right. And no game this year because they have to correct it now. Uh, no, they and, did put out a game. It just wasn't in that series. It was uh, the Battle Oh, yeah, there was that, that weird thing where, where people wrestled in the backyard somewhere or something. Yeah. Yeah, it was a GCW except WWE instead. That's a good way to put it. Um, so, yeah, but because of that, so they put that game out instead, which isn't going to be the same as the 2K series. No. It's left this opening now for AEW to create their own game, and I guess now next year the Wednesday Night War is going to come to PlayStation and Xbox and all that. So, <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, so – Obviously, more details to come in an hour, but they're going to talk about the console game. They're going to talk about these other two things. It did say on the site the console game is in development. It didn't say anything about that for the other two, so there is some speculation that those are done and might be ready to go. Nice. So, well, you got my attention with the Elite GM thing because, uh, yeah, I, I didn't play the TEW version. I was more uh, the Total Warfare Extreme, I, I think, TWR. Yeah, TEW is the evolution. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I played the earlier versions, and I really, really dug those. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty exciting. I like the sound of that. Speaking of exciting, uh, after Full Gear, we have AEW Dynamite coming up this week, and it's a pretty stacked card. I don't know if it's a lot of big names, but they, I still love – what despite the fact that I'm not the biggest AEW fan, I love how they book in advance. They really plan their matches and they announce them ahead of time so that they can tell us three matches on the pay-per-view. And then they've booked a couple extra matches since the pay-per-view. So just to give you that rundown of the card, we want to really make sure we pronounce the name right because we would just want to call it Pentagon because it's easier that yes. way. But Tenta Penta L Zero M. Yeah. Pentagon is going to take <laughs> on Phoenix. <laughs> And, yes. and while that's not my style of match, that's a huge match for that. As, that as long as Phoenix isn't falling on his neck again, this match is going to be great. Awesome um, stuff there. Uh, yeah. They announced today Brian Cage taking on Matt Seidel. Uh, yeah. So that'll be an interesting one. Uh, Matt Seidel, on- the, man, the man who is not signed but yet is on every AEW show. He, he slipped into the promotion. He slipped out. <laughs> The poor guy, he's recovered so well from that. Well, you know what? To to be fair, I noticed the, the on a segment on Raw, MVP told uh, Titus O'Neil that the match is going to happen on top of the ring, which was a good reference to when he slid oh, underneath. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> MVP a, is the best. <laughs> he is one true highlight to uh, to WWE Raw. But let's 
skip uh, over yeah. WWE for now. Uh, what else is going on? Tay Conti with Anna Jay in her corner going to be facing Red Velvet with Brandy Rhodes in her corner. Uh, yeah. Tay Conti is someone, because I was watching NXT, I'm still excited for a lot of potential. And you're saying she's showing a lot of that potential on AEW Dark and Dynamite these days, right? Yes. She she looks like she's going to be really good in a, and maybe... Maybe a year, maybe a little longer, but the the raw potential is there. She's looked impressive when we've seen her. They got a decent story here that's been delayed because Ty unfortunately hit Abaddon in the throat a couple of weeks ago, and they had to scrap that match and right. whatever developments were going to happen there. But they have a nice angle with Anna Jay trying to get Ty Conti to join the Dark Order. Anna Jay is feuding with Brandy. They had that surprisingly good match on the... Uh, late night dynamite that got Ben Carter, his contract with mm -hmm. NXT. Um, so that's going to be what this match is all about. They're going to continue that red velvet has been aligned with Brandy. She's very good. I expect she's signed or will be signed shortly. Good. So, I mean, I don't know if this will be as impressive as Serena versus Allison K from the pay-per-view, but it should be good. Okay. It'll be interesting if nothing else. They got to build up the women. So even though they might not mm. be champions in the next year, you want to build up that roster and get the potential out of. Want to get Kanji. them as many reps too as possible. Yeah. And that's a tough thing. I know it we yeah. it doesn't get discussed very often, but a lot of these wrestlers, even the ones in AEW who are touring for AEW one week, uh, yeah. one day a week, I should say, they still did a lot of independent shows. So they were getting more and more matches per week than they're getting right now. Where WWE went from house shows down to one match per week uh, for each of these people at best, most of them are in catering. So I, I think well, it's sort of related to injuries, for example, it's going to be hard for people to stay in that, you know, uh, momentum if they're not wrestling more than once a week. So thankfully, yeah, you're t totally right when it comes to reps with involving these women. Yes. The women in particular, because a lot of AEW's female talent is younger you know, a little on the green side, but they got a lot of potential. So the important thing there is get him as many reps as possible. It's the same with like a guy like Will Hobbs too, although Will is further along and I would say very good already, but mm -hmm. he still has potential to get better. And the best way for that to happen is you just keep putting him out in the ring. That's why Dark has become, you know, so good for me because it allows them to get as many people as they can on that. And get them the reps they need and eventually you're going to see that pay off down the road absolutely uh, it's almost like they're developmental is dark mm -hmm. going to dynamite so it's a good way to look at it uh right. other matches booked i'm going to save this one for last because this is the one we want to get excited for but uh earlier this week they announced uh, sean spears against scorpio sky we're not sure if that's going to take place anymore because you were saying they that kind of silently so got removed so originally it was announced that this match and the Young Bucks versus Top Flight, which is the team of um, Angel Dorado and Airwolf, who mm -hmm. MLW fans will remember, very talented team. Those two matches were originally booked. And then it was quietly removed from Twitter. And I know for sure that the Bucks Top Flight match is off. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been anything said about Scorpio Sky and Sean Spears. So... I would lean towards it being on, but we're not sure. So just a disclaimer there. Obviously, that match is coming. It was supposed to happen last week. Scorpio Sky was um, initially thought to have been in contact with someone who had been in contact with somebody who had COVID. Right. But as it turns out, that was not the case. Scorp tested negative several times. So he is good to go. So I would assume this match will happen. And it'll be fine. Sean yeah. Spears is solid. I think Scorp is very good. It's not the most exciting match in the world, but it'll be fine. It's a it's a mid card match, and I'm hoping, from an outside point of view, Scorpio Sky is a very exciting. I don't want to yes. even say prospect because he's he's very experienced, but one of those guys that AEW is probably going to promote into the main event at some point. So he's a prospect to be one of their stars in the future. Yeah, they definitely they're they've been high on him since the beginning. They do definitely want to do something with him. Yeah, he he had some good moments that I did catch before I kind of started to tune out. But uh, yeah. he got involved with the early TNT title stuff. He had some good stuff with um, Jericho. Yeah, that's what it was. The Jericho match that yeah. was very good as well. Uh, speaking of Jericho, MJF is going to join the inner circle, so they're going to do a segment out of that. 
And Hopefully Sammy and the guys got out of the woods in time for this one. <laughs> uh, and then Cody is going to make some sort of speech or announcement. He's going to get the microphone. And there's very few people in AEW that I, I find more intriguing on the microphone. I'm not saying he's the best promo. He's just very, very solid. But he, he knows how to create drama with what he does. So I, right, I'd be excited yeah. for that one. But the one we're most excited for, because we are such old school fans, is the bunkhouse tag match of uh, the Natural Nightmares against Butcher and Blade. So go nuts with your WCW fandom right now. I just, why do we keep bringing these things back? Did, did like Cody see, oh man, they, they used the wheel. I got to <laughs> get it back on them. We got to bring, what can I do? We can't do Chamber of Horrors. It's past Halloween. We can't do that. <laughs> give, give me the bunkhouse. <laughs> Dustin, you're doing the bunkhouse. We're going we're gonna to get Smash back. He's going to be involved <laughs> in it too. You know, that, that was the King of the Road match you're getting confused with there, I think. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, apples and oranges here. <laughs> in all seriousness, in all seriousness, this match is probably going to be very good. Very fun. Dustin Rhodes is unbelievable he's still so great even at his age qt is really good he's a really good worker not the flashiest guy but he's a great second banana for dustin mm -hmm. he does a lot of, he does everything well he doesn't maybe doesn't do everything great but he does everything well and you and i we both love uh the butcher and the blade whether they're you know making fashion statements or you know just cutting killing it in the ring there i mean I and do they've like, been really impressive this summer i summer. really like that style of wrestler uh tag team wrestler especially because yeah. and i go back to the fact that i watch a lot of older wrestling i'm currently going week by week with through uh 1988 wwf and i'm seeing the powers of pain i'm seeing the heart foundation i'm seeing demolition obviously and that's what these guys remind me of where um we we get a bruiser, which we don't see well. Like, I think Bludgeon Brothers are the last WWE example to really get this right, where it's just big monsters of a tag team. Um, and then that's what Butcher would be. And then Blade is semi. He's bigger than a lot of the roster, but he's also more of a, the speed guy of the team. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite teams in AEW. Uh, I, again, I like a different style. I'm not into the flashy stuff. I did was not very high on the tag title match that was at full gear, whereas Butcher and the Blade... That gets my attention. Uh, uh, hey, I'm into the flashy stuff, and I love these two. Yeah, I mean the they're I mean butchers look even without even without the the overalls and the backstage <laughs> stuff where he's walking around like a sailor. When he gets in that ring with the monocle and he's got the tattoos and the weird, you know, the, the build the butcher hair. facial hair and everything, yeah. he's just he's such a great presence. I, I'm not sure. I'm sure he would even tell you he's never going to be like a super worker, but he's a good worker. Solid. He does very well. And Blade, I'm just so happy for that guy because before this, his claim to fame was being the guy at that wedding in Impact. Right. And and then he comes here and he's great. He's just he's terrific. I'm so happy for him. They they are a great team. They mesh together so well and they've stepped up every single time like you wouldn't think they'd be able to keep up with the young bucks mm. and they had several matches with them that were just awesome well the one last thing i want to cover quickly uh is well well we're excited for wednesday night because it's usually the most dependable night of wrestling smackdown's usually pretty That's good the but you're never disappointed on a Wednesday night. Uh, but speaking of Wednesday night competition, as of next week, uh, not the main promotion, not a lot of people are going to remember this one, but MLW has been uh, restarted. Gonna be on Wednesday? It's going to be on Wednesdays, at least on oh, uh, YouTube, I think it is. I think it's on BN Sports on Saturday, but it's officially airing the 18th, so ne uh, next week on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to have the restart with two title matches, the big, uh, well, I'll say the opening card one. Brian Pillman Jr., who you've probably seen in AEW, he's going to take on the middleweight champion, Myron Reed. Middleweight oh, champion man. is essentially their cruiserweight division. Yes, Myron Reed Solid. is unbelievable. Very good. Unbelievable, wrestler. that guy. I've seen him not just in MLW. I saw him in GCW a lot this summer. He is, it reminds me a lot of AR Fox in a way. Okay. You From know, the, just Lucha Underground. incredible yeah. athleticism. Great, great flyer, great all around worker, though, too. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I would imagine he's going to retain because 
Pillman is pretty much just counting the days until he can get out of that deal and he can go team with Griff Garrison full time in <laughs> AEW. Yeah, he'll end up in AEW. And another one that is possible to go to AEW in the future is in the main event of that show. The MLW title match is going to be between Jacob Vatu and Pillman's uh, tag team partner and stablemate. And uh, I guess, are they cousins officially? But Davey Boy yeah. Smith Jr. Now, no, I don't think they're cause. I think the connection is just because of the '97 Heart Foundation, or, okay. or whatever. You for a minute there, people are probably going to watch that back and go, "Oh man, he means Teddy Hart, doesn't he?" <laughs> no, no, Teddy he's in jail. <laughs> and and no, people, Teddy Hart, as best I know, is still in prison. Yeah, he's he's so. doing his his solo cage match right now. <laughs> So when it comes to MLW, for those who are interested in finding another alternative, I know I talk a lot about WWE, but there's more than enough wrestling out there. If you want to give a shot to something other than the WWE, if it's been depressing you too much, MLW is a very good option and they end up on YouTube. So it's a show you can watch for free. They're also on B in sports uh, that honestly, I'm in Canada. I don't know how to get B in sports. So I go to YouTube to watch that show. Right. Well, this is this is going to be in that main event in particular is interesting because there is a lot of speculation. You know, David, we know WWE wants Davy Boy. Everyone does. Imp- Impact has wanted him. A Jim Ross loves him. Mm-hmm. Well, which hey, I don't blame him. I have been high on Davy Boy Smith Jr. since the moment I found out he was in the business. That's right. When he was like 18 years old, he's been around for forever now. Um. And yeah, if, you, if you remember him from just his WWE work as part of the Hart Dynasty, he was good, but he was green. He's built up a lot of experience since then, especially in Japan. And then uh, the other tie-in is if he were to go to AEW, he could join up with Lance Archer again. Uh, and that would be a pretty interesting combo. That would be interesting too, because that would mean he would probably be managed by Jake. And if you recall, they had an incident mm-hmm. at a, uh, I think a WrestleMania weekend over something there too. I, I I think it's probably going to be WWE. If he wants to go back, because he's, I don't know if he's ever come out and said it, but he's been a sour about leaving WWE the first time. So he might be one of those that feels too jaded and doesn't want to go back. It's possible, but you know, Natalia is still there. Uh, Tyson TJ. is still working back there as a, an agent and such. And I know he's close with them and, I mean, I think th- I think putting him with Archer and Jake would be the best thing for him because the one thing that he's always been iffy on is speaking, and Jake and and Lance especially. Lance has really become a great promo out of nowhere. And we were just talking about tag teams in AEW and how I would like a big bruiser team. Doesn't get much bruiser than uh, uh, could Harry you Smith. imagine? We're talking about Big Butch and the Blade. Could you re- imagine the Killer Elite Squad versus Big Butch and the Blade? And so I'm now going to plead to Davey Boy Smith <laughs> Jr. If he's listening. Go to AEW. Patch now, things up with Jake Roberts. Patch it up with – give Jake a call right now and patch it up so you can make Joe and I very happy. <laughs> I, uh, and just I, us. <laughs> Forget yeah, your own happiness. Yeah. Well, whatever ends up happening in the future, at least we have the 18th to look forward to for the MLW restart. Uh, MLW is, um, I think what I liked the best about it was that show before AEW, uh, MLW had the most variety of matchup styles. They didn't have a lot of heavyweights. So outside of the heavyweights, they had a lot of Lucha and Cruiserweight type style. They had some strong um, uh, tag team and, A big thing that people forget is right now you look at AEW and you think, wow, uh, MJF has really come out of nowhere and made himself a star. Well, anyone who was tuning into MLW last year saw that MJF didn't just come out of nowhere. He's been there. He was leading a a stable called the Dynasty, and (laughs) they're still around. I don't think they'll be anywhere as good without MJF, but he really was a top talent there. And uh, if you're looking at the type of promotion that's going to build someone up for the next generation, I have a feeling MLW is going to have to get used to that because everyone's going to be paying attention to Jacob Fatu. Obviously, we just talked about Harry Smith, Davey Boy Jr. Uh, Brian Pillman's been on AEW's radar for a long time. A lot of their top talent's going to end up being picked up, but well, it's a good place to enjoy them for the moment. Go ahead. Well, with Jacob Fatu, they, he's actually, I believe, signed for, I believe, north of four years. Yeah. So they don't, they don't need to worry about him for a... 
You never little, know. That's good because he's the guy. He's the guy there. Oh, yeah. He's and tremendous. he's, by the way, when you th- hear the name Fatu, you might think of Rikishi. No, 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 no. He, he's definitely related, but he can work. This guy is a, uh, is a lot closer to, I, I want to say more like uh, Rikishi when you think of him in the head shrinkers, where he can actually use his weight properly. Umaga. He wasn't just his he's butt. More, yeah. more like, he's an a- more athletic Umaga. Yeah. You know what? Umaga, great. Great comparison. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't think of that. Yeah, he's very much like a, a Numaga, and uh, we, uh, we we see a lot of potential in him. We've been seeing it because we both were watching MLW at the time, and we know this guy is going to be signed at some point, though maybe not for four years. When when he 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 main evented the first pay per view against my guy, the legendary LA Park, and they had a tour de force match there, which is not surprising. L.A. Park will be 70 and still one of the best wrestlers in the world. <laughs> is he reaching but 70 or he's more in his 50s or 50s right now, right? He is 55. 55. Okay. L.A. Park is right now 55, and I would still take him almost over almost everyone in AEW and WWE right now. Yeah, I, I think love that. It's a bit of a stretch, but I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, he's – I mean, obviously, it's not when he was in WCW. He obviously was lighter and he had a lot more – athleticism then but he still can do dives he's a great brawler he is one of the most charismatic performers of all time and so i and, and mean yeah that was a big match for fatu who was i mean he had impressed us before that we could see it then but for sure they put those two in a prime spot and they had a killer match and so and- yeah one thing that MLW did really good, especially with Jacob Fah too, was they created this Contra unit stable. And I find it's very tough to create a good heel stable without them being cool and you want to cheer them, like going to NXT Undisputed Era. It's kind of hard to call them heels because they've been cheered pretty much the whole time. But Contra unit was hated, genuinely hated. People did not want to cheer for them. They were very talented and good on the mic but they were just so good as heels uh, and they really got everyone over to some level. Like Joseph Samael is not a great worker, but he's amazing on the mic and you just hate him. Uh, Simon, Simon, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Simon, like they resurrected. He was, he was the bored villain guy. Nobody yeah. even remembered he had been an indie guy mm-hmm. prior to that. And they completely changed his career for the better that's right people actually saw the talented guy that he is there well, by the way simon gotch is who you might remember him from uh, uh wwe yes. goes by simon grim on a lot of promotions but i think he's still gotch and mlw uh, if i still remember correctly yeah i think you might actually be right there i think he's rotated back and forth at times but i think it's back to being gotch yeah, yeah and so. the last thing we saw him involved in was the blood sports show and uh, mm-hmm. he had a losing record from the previous shows but he got his first win and you know it anyone who knows what blood sport is it's a very particular style and he worked that well and you can imagine how he can transfer that into a heel style in that gimmick um for the the stable of contra unit trust me it's been good stuff yeah he's, yeah. he's a very very good heel very and good you were just saying very Airwolf. good technical worker Yes, very good technical yeah. worker, which we would have known back from his. Uh, I, I think we we're saying it wrong. Was it the Vaude Villains or Vaude? Yeah, it's the Vaude Villains Vaude with Aiden English. Yeah, I remember the team. I just don't remember how they pronounced it. And they were a really solid, not amazing tag team, but they were really solid in ring workers. So he yeah. brings that a lot of that talent out in MLW Bloodsport. Uh, what else? Well, you just mentioned the team that's going to be on. Uh, I think it was AEW said uh, Airwolf was going to make their debut. Airwolf and Angel Dorado, his brother. Okay. Yeah, top uh, flight. And then was it uh, Ariel De- Dominguez that's been on Dark a few times as well recently? Yeah, he was just on last week. He uh, it did not go too well. No, no. <laughs> he's never going to be a star. He's very much like a well, he's not as bad as a Marco stunt, but he's definitely way too small to make anything out of. Uh, I think, for he's, a, a I think he's smaller than Marco Is actually. He? Wow. Yeah. But yeah, we saw him in uh, MLW for a while. So a lot of good talent being brought out of MLW. I do recommend giving it a shot. It is a free show. You don't have to go look too far. Uh, just go to YouTube. And if you're watching this, you know how to use YouTube. So Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, anything going on, Lucha, before we sign off? I know uh, they had to cancel a lot of CMLL shows. Is a AAA announced anything for the future? We're still waiting to see if Triple Mania will be a go next month. CMLL is not back. As I look at my calendar, the 27th 
of this month. Okay. Honestly, I would not mind if it was the 27th of next month instead. I am perfectly <laughs> fine yeah, you're with not no CMLL for the near distant future. Well, we got MLW coming back. ROH has got a new pure champion and they're going to get back into the, uh, basically they're going to have their whole division, uh, their whole roster used in the future. So uh, they got EC3 on ROH, which is very, I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's interesting. Um, I thought an in-ring style, I would imagine working well in ROH, but in terms of character work, he's one of the better ones today. He yeah. just came from impact. They're on a roll, in my opinion, with uh, rich Swan as the champion, Eric young as a heel chasing him. There's a lot of good things going on there. Uh, and Pace... and mo most importantly, we are still, we have our top men on who shot Bravo. That's right. We are trying. And when we know you will know dear people. You realize you're saying your top men is Tommy Dreamer, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 separate. We're not going <laughs> to reveal who we have working on this. Tommy Dreamer is not involved in whether... our private investigation. <laughs> I'm working very hard on that, by the way. <laughs> uh, when it comes to other Wednesday night shows, whether you're a Dynamite fan or an NXT fan, you know darn well they're both very popular, solid wrestling shows. So there's a lot of good wrestling. As, as much as we crap on Raw pretty much every Tuesday, the truth is we're never disappointed as wrestling fans because there's always something to talk about. So hopefully, yes. even if you're having fun tr trashing Raw, if you want to get a good wrestling fix, Impact, AEW, NXT, SmackDown, MLW is coming back, ROH is on a roll. Uh, there's so much wrestling out there. So enjoy yeah. yourselves with your wrestling. Thank you again for joining me this week, Eric. Yeah, no problem. Guys, just take Mondays off is the point. Yeah, just honestly. Just take them off, watch every other day. Or if you really want to torture yourself, watch it later, skip everything you don't need to watch. And then it's an only, you know, it's a 10 minute YouTube video when you want to do it that way. Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's a good idea too, right there. Good job. That's why you're the, the head of this operation here. And I am the Andy Richter. <laughs> I am not Conan. Uh, I can't move my hair the way he does, but uh, I do have a pimp bot 3000 in the closet though. There you go. There you go. So thank you very much for me to poop on. I am Joe Martell, Eric Mutter. Uh, thank you again. Wrestle Takes Mania, 411 Mania. Hit the subscribe button. Like all the videos and podcasts. We'll be back next week. See you then. Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Very See good ya. One. Cult.